more proactive set of uh, measures to send a clear signal uh, that an invasion of a democracy, a market economy, uh, an entity that, uh, as you noted, freely elected their president not many days ago, will not be tolerated. We all learn from our experiences, and I think a number of my colleagues, after watching the Russians invade Ukraine and the activities that we took that were reactive after the fact, trying to use international institutions and standards and a variety of things to get the Russians' attention, I think most of us realized that was too late. So in the circumstances of Taiwan, the House recently passed a bill of mine, the Protect Taiwan Act, basically to say that from a financial services institution perspective, if China invades Taiwan, then the U.S. representatives on everything from G20 to the international settlement banks to all of the financial institutions that we're a part of will work to expel them, to proactively say, if you want to benefit from the market economy, from an open world society, then you have to play by the rules. And if you are not going to play by the rules, then you can't be a part of these institutions anymore. By the way, I would note, Tom, that it was not just joining the WTO, but another, a number of other international institutions in the last 30 years that enabled the Chinese to dramatically grow economically to, while it may not be the same standard of living for the rest of Asia or the rest of the world, but to dramatically improve the standard of living for the typical uh, person in China. They have benefited from our open society. So if they're not going to be a part of our open society, they should not be able to economically benefit uh, from the chaos and destruction that they could bring. Um, so I don't like wars. I want to prevent wars, and I want to send a signal. You can't be a part of the club of, uh, of world economic powers if you act like a tyrant.